Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox, head of the Utah Coronavirus Task Force. Thank you so much for being part of Three Questions. Thank you, Bob. It's great to be with you remotely. Yes, we're social distancing again. With all of the effort in self-isolation and all of the steps that have been taken to stop this virus, how will we know if we're being successful? Well, the good news is that we've rapidly increased our testing over the last few days. And, and this is what matters because to make these decisions and see if they're working, we have to have good data. And uh, unfortunately, there's been a, a nationwide problem with testing, getting enough testing kits, getting enough of the uh, the chemicals that you need to process those kits, the swabs that are necessary. And, and we now have the ability, um, since la last week we were at about 500 tests a day, we're ramping up to about 2,500 tests a day this week. And that will help us know if we're starting to flatten the curve. There is a lag time, and, and it's critical right now over the next two weeks more than ever. We need people to to physically distance, to social distance, to avoid, if you're, if you're sick at all or have any symptoms, to avoid any contact with people. That's what's going to prevent the spread of this, this virus from happening exponentially like we've seen in other countries and other states. And so we're, we're, uh, we'll know because of the data and the testing over the next few weeks if what we're doing is working, but we feel very confident that it is. Early on, um, I thought maybe I ought to go get tested for coronavirus, and uh, because of the anxiety of my family members and some of my coworkers and that kind of thing, I went and they said I didn't qualify. I didn't have a fever, I didn't have a dry cough, I hadn't been around anybody that had been diagnosed with coronavirus, and uh, knowing that the incubation period for this virus is two to 14 days, and that sometime in that time you are contagious for at least two to three of those days, if you don't have any symptoms and you are contagious, it seems to me that the CDC guidelines are not adequate to figure out who actually has the disease before those symptoms present. Is there anyone here in Utah or elsewhere who's coming up with other guidelines that can guide us toward those folks who are asymptomatic and who have not tested positive and, and, and are still contagious? Well, so in a perfect world, we would love to be able to test everyone every day, but we know that that, that can't happen. That, that doesn't happen in any country. What's most important is that we find those people who are symptomatic, who are testing positive right now, and then people who have been in contact with those people. While it is true that you can pass the disease um, asymptomatic, uh, the, the odds of it happening are actually very, very low. Most of the time, this gets, this gets passed because of droplets, and those droplets come out of our mouths onto other surfaces when we're coughing, sneezing, and we're sick. And so by, by testing as many people as we can who have those symptoms, and then finding out this is the contact tracing. So, so testing is the first part. Contact tracing is the second part. Everyone they've been in contact with over the past few days, we test them even if they're not symptomatic to see if they have it. Then we can quarantine those people. That's how you get ahead of this disease. That's how they've done it in South Korea. That's how they've done it in China. That's how they've done it in other places is they, they can't test everyone. Um, and, and so when someone is exhibiting symptoms, now the good news is we should be able to start testing everyone exhibiting symptoms. Until um, this week, we couldn't even do that. We could only do it if you had symptoms and you had been in contact with someone because there were just so few tests left or you were in the hospital, something like that. So that's what's changing this week. And that is our strategy over the next month and, and, and beyond is we test everyone who has symptoms and then we look back and find the 50 people they've been in contact with over the, the, the last week uh, since just before they started exhibiting symptoms. We test them and we quarantine everyone who, who tests positive and we stop the spread of this disease. Lieutenant Governor, uh, you've come up with, the task force has come up with a three-phase plan to get Utah back on its feet again after coronavirus. For the folks who have not heard about that plan, can you briefly explain what it is and how it works? Yeah, so we've, what we've been talking about right now is phase one. That's the urgent phase of this plan. And I would encourage everybody to go to coronavirus.utah.gov. That's coronavirus.utah.gov. And you can see the three phases of this plan. But the first 
phase is really the health phase, and that is to make sure we stop the spread of this, the exponential spread. So if one person spreads it to two people um, and everyone does that, we will never get ahead of this. But if one person spreads it to less than one person, so zero people, uh, then, then that's how we get ahead of that. And that's the urgent phase, and that's what we're in right now. If we all follow the rules and we social distance and we wash our hands and we don't go out and we don't spread those germs, then, uh, then we'll be able to move into phase two, which will is the stabilization phase. This is where we bent the curve. Um, we're not overwhelming our, uh, our healthcare systems. We're, we're able to get our economy starting to move, still, still using social distancing. Um, maybe we'll, we'll have people taking people's temperatures as they come into work, those types of things, just to make sure that sick people aren't infecting others. And, uh, and then it, it all, this also buys us time uh, so that the entrepreneurs and the, uh, the chemists and, and the, the, the doctors, the incredible people in our country can come up with antivirals and, and eventually a vaccine so that when we get on the other side of this, our economy goes back and we're roaring again and, uh, and, and we're back in business. This plan goes over several months, all the way to the end of the year. Can we hope that, is there any way to shorten that amount of time? There, there is a way to shorten it, and the way to shorten that is to have everybody do their part. This is really a call to action, and when I talk about two weeks being important. If you see what's happening in New York and California and other places where their healthcare systems are getting overloaded, um, every one of us has a role to play. We cannot be the vector that spreads this disease. And so th this, this idea of staying home if you can, um, you need to do that. If you're over the age of 60 and, and, or you have underlying health conditions, you really need to not go out at all. And for those of us that do have to go out, we need to stay six feet away from people wherever possible. We need to wash our hands as much as possible. That, that Honestly, there, that is how we are going to speed this up. And then with the increased testing, um, we, I mentioned 2,600. We hope to get up much higher than that to where we're testing 10,000 people a day over the next few weeks. That will, again, allow us to put an end, kind of a circuit breaker to everyone that tests positive. They don't infect someone else and, uh, and, and, and continue this on. The, the, the more we do that, the more we shorten the first period of this and, and the quicker we get to the, the next phases. How do we know that uh, we're not getting a whole bunch of false negatives in these tests? Because the number of people being tested, and they're being tested because they either show the symptoms or qualify according to the CDC guidelines, how do we know that the huge number of negative tests, that a certain percentage of these aren't false? <laughs> Yeah, so clearly with any testing, and I'm, I'm not an epidemiologist, this isn't what I, what I do for a living, but talking to the experts, there are on occasion false, uh, false negatives that do happen. Um, but, but these tests have been validated. Um, they've been run through a rigorous testing of the test to make sure that we're getting um, the, the best and most accurate information possible. And, uh, and that's what we're doing. Obviously, if symptoms persist or someone ends up in the hospital and they've tested negative, they can be retested tested to see if there's a positive uh, later on. That sometimes happens with, with flu tests as well. We do get false positives on occasion, uh, but, but they are much, they are very accurate and, uh, and, and the best thing we have going for us right now. President Trump wants to get the United States back on its feet and the economy rolling again by April 12th. Is that too soon? Well, um, as the governor said yesterday, um, we uh, we believe in miracles, and we want to get the economy back open by uh, by Easter as well. And uh, we're we're all praying for that, and and even more than that, we're all working towards that. We're working as hard as we possibly can, but but. What's most important is that we allow the data to drive the decisions, and that's what's going to happen. We're, we're, we're putting out goals, um, and if you look at the plan, there are deadlines in there, and they're not deadlines, but they are goals. They are dates that we're working towards over the next eight to, eight to 12 weeks to move through this first phase, um, again, hoping we can do it quicker. And uh, there's nothing we would like more than to have this all gone by April 12th, um, but uh, we know we have a long way to go to get there. The governor has said that he wants to flatten that curve that we've all been talking about, and now we are hearing that that is starting to happen. Does that mean that we are moving farther away from an everyone stay home order? 
Well, we would all like to avoid that. And, and the only way to avoid that is if everyone is doing, doing their part, as, as I mentioned earlier. If we're doing that, we may be able to avoid uh, a, a, an everyone stay home order. And, and so, yes, if we can show that that curve is flattening and, and we're not seeing the exponential increases, that's exactly what we're, what we're looking for. Remember, we were, uh, we were the first state to implement a, um, a, 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 a reduction in mass congregations. No Nobody over a hundred. We were the first state to do that. Um, we were one of the first states to uh, to uh, suspend our schools um, with with the delay that comes from getting infected to seeing the results of that infection. We're just now starting to see the results of uh, of ending those mass gatherings, and so that that's why you have to wait a couple weeks to find out if the decisions you made two weeks ago are actually working. And uh, we're we're hopeful. Um, the signs over the last couple days show that we've kind of leveled out. We're having about close to you know 40 to 50 um, people that are testing positive every day and we're expanding our testing at the same time so that's that's good news we do expect though that as we significantly increase the number of tests we are going to see an increase in positive but those are people who were not getting tested before and they were they were still getting the disease but we just didn't know about it so we expect an increase in those numbers um, but we're hopeful that the decisions we've made will allow us to level off not overwhelm our health care system and not need uh, much more stringent measures. But if it doesn't happen, we will have to take those more stringent measures. So please, 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 people, take this seriously. At what point did you and your wife say, hey, you know what, we got to do something different? Because I, I know at our house, Diane and I said, no, the kids are not going to school. And that was two days before they decided to close the schools. At what point did you at your house say, you know what, we got to do something different? And tell us what it looks like at your house in terms of yeah. that. Sure, sure. So we we uh, we followed the decisions that were made at the state level. Again, recommendations went to the governor. The governor made those decisions, and together with legislative leadership, and we we have followed those. For us, um, we are always extra cautious. Um, I have uh, I have two siblings with uh, the disease cystic fibrosis, which means that their lung function is compromised and has been throughout their life, and uh, and so we are always incredibly careful this time of year when it's flu season. And uh, so, so we 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 are a little more used, I think, to these these kind of stringent standards than than maybe some other families, and uh, and we take this very very carefully. I had talked to my sister; she had pulled her kids out of school before the uh, the school closure deadline because, again, of the the concerns that that were happening. And uh, but but for us, we've been following the the day they close school. Our kids have been home. Um, I have a I have a son who's home from college. I have a missionary that's coming home soon, and will be quarantined for 14 days. And so we're following the rules like everyone else. Every day there is a state briefing and update and every day there is a federal briefing and update. How do you prevent information overload when we get into a situation like this? Well, communication is always the most important part and unfortunately the most difficult of any type of crisis. Even in the best of times, communicating is very difficult, especially because we have so many ways of getting our information now, right? Social media, um, the cable news, uh, everybody gets to pick and choose whatever they want to hear. And it, unfortunately, it usually is what, whatever fits their worldview and we don't hear um, sometimes uh, contrary views. So we are working very hard. What we hear mostly from people is they're, they're really starving for data and information and accurate information. And so we want to provide that accurate information to them. Um, I, I would caution people from over-consuming that information, though. It's, it's not healthy uh, to be engaged in the news and social media all day long. Um, I, I've encouraged people. I said today, turn off social media, exercise, call a friend, uh, take a break and, and pause and look at the beautiful things around us. Try to find the good in the world around us so that we don't don't get overwhelmed, but just know that there are trusted sources where you can go, and coronavirus.utah.gov is the best source to get uh, information about what's happening here in the state of Utah, and we are updating it multiple times every day. Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox, head of the Coronavirus Task Force here in Utah, thank you so much for being part of Three Questions. Thank you, Bob.